Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is investigative reporter Spencer Fernando. You can find his articles at SpencerFernando.com. Welcome back to the show, Spencer. Good to be here. Spencer, three known incidents now of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau wearing black face or brown face in a party situation, is this a, a make or break deal for the prime minister? Yeah, well, I mean, that remains to be seen. I guess the Canadian people will decide that on election day. Uh, it's certainly, you know, sometimes you look at these things and you think, is it going to gain him any votes? No. I mean, no one is going to vote for him because of this. Is it going to lose some votes? I mean, yes, there's going to be some people who are planning to vote for him who won't. Uh, the question is just how many people, and I think that's what remains to be seen. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, we've had the uh, expected reaction from all the different opposition leaders. Did they say anything that stood out? Um, not really. I mean, Jake Meet Singh's response, I think, was more uh, raw and emotional. I think he felt more personally affected by it. I think Shear's response was good as well. I mean, she was saying, uh, you know, that he hasn't personally experienced um, racism or prejudice uh, for his race and uh, actually uh, praised the comments of Jagmeet Singh, so I thought that was nice how he handled it. And Bernie made a good point that uh, Trudeau is the I mean, he's the most hypocritical man in the country, which I don't think many people would disagree with. Right, because uh, take a look at Trudeau. He handed out those warm jackets to the Syrian refugees when they first arrived in Canada. Was that just a photo op, or is there more behind the guy? Well, I think most of this stuff is photo ops. And I think, you know, I've tweeted and it got actually a lot of attention on Twitter that uh, I think a lot of people would be willing to forgive Trudeau if he had shown forgiveness to other people. So, I mean, personally, I think, you know, people make mistakes in their past and they grow, then that's fine. Uh, you know, no one's the same person they were, you know, five years ago, 10, 15, 20, whatever it is. But unfortunately, the liberals have been running a campaign where their whole strategy is based on digging up whatever they could find about conservative candidates and then releasing that to the media and then demanding that people resign and quit and destroy their reputation. So if Trudeau wants to play that kind of game, then he has to be held by the same rules. And if a conservative candidate or even a liberal NDP candidate was found to have done blackface in the past, the liberals would be just shredding them. So, uh, yeah, I, Trudeau shouldn't be able to play by different rules than what he holds other people to. Has it affected him on the campaign trail? Are people at his rally saying things? Well, he's he had uh, just uh, two events, one where he walked around in Winnipeg. Uh, he's holding a third event now, but one where he walked around in Winnipeg and then uh, held a press conference after, and now he's done a uh, town hall yesterday. And leaving the town hall, there were people uh, yelling and uh, swearing at him. Uh, some people gave him the finger, calling him a racist. And then David Aiken reported that a woman walked by Trudeau today and said, Hi, Mr. Blackface, nice to meet you. So, uh, yeah, people are still responding to it. I don't think it's, it's going to go away. When you give the opposition ammunition like that, is there uh, any way for him to rebound apart from his apologies? I mean, no, that's really all that, uh, I mean, everyone's going to, uh, I think, use it the way that they, uh, they choose. I mean, that's politics, right? So. But, uh, I mean, he's going to try to, he, it's too late for them to remove him as the leader, obviously, so they've got to go all in with him and to succeed. The opposition is going to use it as much as they can, and uh, it'll be up to Canadians to see what they say about it. Do you think this will detract from the politicians pushing their particular issues, topics, and platforms? Uh, well, I mean, the Liberals are trying to get back into the campaign announcement today. I think they're talking about guns. The Conservatives did an announcement on like, MRIs and healthcare spending. So they're all trying to get back into it. But uh, really, it's, this is we got to the media. The media will decide when uh, when they want to stop talking about it. 
But the thing is that, uh, you know, there were, there have been a few moments where Trudeau's popularity went down and didn't really recover. So you had the, uh, the first real hit that knocked him down from being relatively popular was the India trip. And then the uh, SNC Lavalin scandal again. And this looks like another one where it's not like the locals are going to fall to 10 or 15%, but in a close election, uh, you know, if they lose even 2, 3, 4%, and that's kind of a permanent loss of people who just say, you know what, just can't vote for Trudeau to be a hypocrite. This is unacceptable. Uh, that can be a big difference in the election. So I think that's, that's what they would, we're going to look for in, in uh, the upcoming polls, whether there's a drop for the liberals and, and whether that's something that uh, the opposition party's going to when you said, uh, was Trudeau forgiving, I guess, uh, you're thinking directly about, uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould and, uh, Jane Philpott. Well, yeah, not just them, but, uh, I mean, the liberal, uh, campaign itself, their war room has been, uh, all about digging up everything they could on conservative candidates and then releasing that, uh, any controversy or bad comment. I mean, there is a guy who shared a meme, uh, all it was was him sharing a meme of Denzel Washington uh with the N word, not even the full N word, but the N word, uh, just in text. And anyone who looks at it knows it's a humorous meme, not even an offensive uh in terms of intent. But uh I mean the, the liberals leaked leaked that and tried to push that person to resign and destroy their reputation. So if they're going into the past and everything and saying people need to quit because of a past mistake, uh then how can they say that old Trudeau gets to learn and grow? See, it's only he, he holds himself to a different standard. The rules are always different for him, right? It's everyone else, oh, you know, canceled, destroyed. For him, oh, it's a national conversation. I've learned and I've changed. I'm so sorry. So why should he be the only one who gets a chance to grow and change? Well, I've noticed Trudeau's pretty hands-on. They criticized Joe Biden for the same thing. Uh, he likes to kiss females that he runs into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's another thing that, uh, has been brought up in the past. Uh, he had the, the whole groping uh, scandal. Uh, and I think it's, you know, each individual thing might not be a deal breaker for people, but I think what it is for a lot of people is the perception of hypocrisy. I mean, if, if you know that, uh, that's in your past, and if you know that, uh, you did blackface in the past, then you don't present yourself as, uh, the most feminist and the most, uh, uh, I guess what, woke or, you know, progressive, whatever you want to call it, uh, you don't make that your, the centerpiece of your image. And I think those are the scandals that really hurt people. And, you know, people say, I mean, a good example is Trump in the States, right? I mean, he keeps most of his core support. And most of the scandals against him are things that were already discussed during the campaign. So whether people think it's good or bad, it's not going against people's expectations. The people who like him uh, expected that. The people who don't like him expected that. But for Trudeau, he's presented himself in such a way that uh, these scandals now are the polar opposite of who he claims to be. And I think for a lot of people, that's why it seems so hypocritical. Uh, one thing I have to comment on, you always see him with uh, rolled up sleeves. Why doesn't he just buy a short sleeve shirt? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's all focus grouped, right? Uh, when you saw the liberal ad on the bus and then Shear's latest ad, uh, where he's talking about his vision for Canada, putting more money in their pocket. They're both wearing almost the exact identical same shade of uh, blue dress shirt. Uh, so that's obviously, obviously some sort of focus group or something, I'm sure, that all the parties have done. But that's exactly the perfect shade to use and the lighting and everything. So, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, there's, I'm sure there's some reason for it. But uh, at a certain point, it doesn't even stand out anymore, right? So you have to change it up again so it gets people's attention. We'll have more with Spencer Fernando after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Grand Portage Resources Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource indicated and inferred of 860,000 ounces in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. 
Welcome back. We're speaking with Spencer Fernando. Well, apart from uh, Mr. Dress Up, and that was his nickname after the India trip, uh, what do you think of the different policies uh, being pushed forward by the candidates? Anything stand out for you? For all the parties? Uh, yeah, if you can you know, mm-hmm. maybe just think of some of them. Yeah, well, I think uh, the conservatives are trying to take a relatively moderate tone. Uh, they had their universal tax cut, which, I mean, actually would be a pretty big tax cut, but they're... They're not really marketing it as a, you know, the biggest tax cut of all time or anything. Uh, the liberals today, I mean, they're talking about guns, which from a strategic perspective, they're obviously trying to change the channel with a divisive issue. They feel they can attack the conservatives with, uh, Jagmeet Singh talking about, uh, dental care. So everyone's kind of sticking within what you'd expect, you know, tax cuts from the conservatives, uh, you know, talk about guns from the liberals, uh, more, uh, social spending from the NDP. Uh, so everyone's kind of sticking to that, but, this election's really become so much on based on uh, personal attacks and attacks on the leaders and you know divided country. So yeah, policy is important, but it doesn't look like it's going to be really a policy based election. Uh, the liberals saying they would ban assault weapons. Well, they'd been in government, of course, uh, for the required amount of time before an election. They had a chance to do that then. Plus, in Canada, I didn't know that assault weapons were allowed to start with. No, and the government often never actually defines what they mean by assault weapon. They just use it as a vague term, I think, to scare people. Uh, and again, the problem with all this is that the real gun crime problem in Canada is urban gun crime gangs, uh, most of whom get their guns illegally from the United States. And then the liberals bring in rules that end up restricting uh, sports shooters, uh, hunters, uh, rural Canadians, uh, none of whom are actually the source of gun crime or gun problems in Canada in the first place. So it's again, it's going to be misdirected. It's a political wedge issue. The Liberals, uh, I'm sure they have polling showing that they can win some extra suburban seats by wedging the Conservatives on guns. So that's what they're going to try to do. The tax cut proposed by Andrew Shear that would uh, affect every taxpaying Canadian, wouldn't it? Uh, I noticed the Trudeau cuts were good for people who made about eighty thousand a year or more, but if you made less. You weren't included in them. So does this appeal across a, a broader spectrum of the of the uh, planned audience? Of course, uh, CBC did point out, well, 9 million people uh, don't pay any tax, even though they file tax returns, so this isn't a universal tax cut. But how can you cut something for somebody who contributes nothing? Yeah, I thought that CBC, I mean, I straight up called it uh, a bullshit fact check by CBC, uh, if if you cut taxes for everyone who pays income tax, then that's obviously a universal tax cut because everyone who could be paying the tax will be paying less tax. Uh, so CBC, I mean, they're obviously biased playing their games, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's the a chart came out. Um, a economist had done uh, look at the uh, comparing the effect of the conservative cut and the liberal one, and the conservative one is far better for uh, lower income and uh, middle-class Canadians and the liberal one, which was, as you say, skewed towards upper-middle-class and wealthier Canadians. So, I mean, it's interesting to see that the liberals can really push their, uh, the idea that they had a middle-class tax cut, but the conservative tax cut really is much more of a middle-class tax cut than the liberal one was. We'll have more with Spencer Fernando right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Spencer Fernando. Uh, Spencer, uh, still speaking about the issues. I think the Liberals proposed that they would increase benefits for seniors uh, after the age of 75. Would the Conservatives uh, increase the age for uh, receiving Canada Pension Plan again, like they did under Harper? I don't think so. Uh, that was a pretty unpopular pledge. Uh, I think that backfired on them. 
the Conservatives did, or the Liberals did pretty well among seniors in 2015. Uh, this time, I think Shear is proposing an extra 1,000. It would average out to 1,000 a year uh, in support for uh, seniors. So it seems like they're they're not going in the direction of making things tougher on seniors. Which I mean, that's that's smart. I mean, seniors contributed a lot to our country, built our country, and uh, just politically speaking, they tend to vote in very high numbers. So anything that makes life tougher for them is uh, not a good idea, either morally uh, or politically. Canadian People's Party leader. Bernier, Maxime Bernier, will now be included in the next round of debates. Was that a good move on the part of the debate commission? I think so. Uh, Bernier has taken some positions on issues that uh, really go against the uh, establishment, you could say. Immigration is an example. Uh, you show, you look at most polls, uh, and only a very, very small percent of Canadians want more immigration. Uh, and many polls have shown half of Canadians saying they actually want immigration levels reduced. Uh, the establishment likes to claim that that's somehow anti-immigrant, but uh, there's obviously many immigrants who say that overall immigration levels should be reduced. And it's worth noting, noting that Canada already has some of the highest immigration levels in the world, so even reducing uh, Canada's immigration levels would still leave us with some very high levels of immigration anyway. Uh, so I think Bernie will uh, bring up things that we're not being talked about, uh, personally, I think there should be a tiered system of debates. So at the start of the election, you should be including everyone in the debates. Uh, it gives everyone a chance to, you know, grow their support, uh, you know, uh, gain support in the polls, see how popular they are. And then closer to election day, I think the debate should be uh, whittled down to only the people have a chance to win. So I think that would be the best of both worlds, of giving everyone a chance to get their message out and then having a more clear debate towards the end. Uh, that's not happening this time, but I think in the future that'd be the way to go. Jobs and the economy, are people putting enough focus on that? And uh, the NDP seems, a lot of their policies seem to be taken right out of the pages of the Green Party campaign book. We're against uh, fracking, we're against pipelines, we're against oil and gas. Yeah, I mean, I think the NDP is... uh the NDP and the Greens are locked in a battle for third place party, and I think that's what's happening right now, is that they're competing very much for the same constituency, and they're uh, so they're kind of having to fight each other on the, the left or far left, really. Uh, when it comes to the economy, I think, uh, it, as I said, it seems pretty uh, doctrinaire so far, the Conservatives' uh, tax cuts, liberals are going to be talking about, I'm sure, more government spending. Uh, so, we'll see. Uh, the economy is an interesting issue because the, the top line numbers uh, that the government puts out appear good, but then every time you ask Canadians how they feel the economy is going, they say it's not going well at all. So there's a very big disconnect between the official numbers and what people are actually feeling. I just saw an article the other day that said for the first time in 10 years, the capital wealth of Canadians has fallen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of concerning signs about the economy, uh, often indicators that are... Um, you know, indicating a recession coming up or a serious economic problems coming up. Uh, one of the worst is the debt problem. I mean, Canada has among the highest household debt in the world, uh, per capita, obviously. Uh, the, and the percentage of income that people are spending on debt payments has reached a record level. So those are things similar to what you saw in the United States, where, uh, you know, debt doesn't seem like a problem until it is, and then once it's a problem, it's a huge problem. And uh, Canada's heading in a dangerous direction right now. Well, we're seeing people applying for bankruptcy or consumer proposals at an increasing rate where some firms say they're seeing up to a thousand people a month come in saying, you know, I'm over my head. What can I do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this all feeds into what I just said about how uh, the top line economic numbers look good, but uh, people say they're struggling. And I think what we're seeing is people, because people tend to do everything they can to at least maintain their standard of living, right? Even if it's getting more expensive. So I think Canadians are going further and further into debt to just stay where they are. Uh, but at a certain point, people just can't go into any more debt. And once it doesn't take, you know, you know, what two or three percent of the population uh, starts to have serious debt problems, uh, and they're not going to be buying as much. So stores lose sales. Uh, stores have to lay some people off. Those people laid off, they've got debt problems too. They're not spending as much, and that's how you very quickly get a, uh, an economy that starts, uh, you know, collapsing or at least uh, contracting very quickly. And I think that's where we're heading. 
Uh, Spencer, anything else that you think we should be taking a look at right now? Uh, no, I don't think that's all for now. Spencer, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, good talking to you. My guest has been investigative reporter Spencer Fernando. You can find his articles at spencerfernando.com. If you have any questions for Spencer or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and talkdigitalnetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at talkdigitalnetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.